Welcome to Co-op Mode, round 56. This is the official video game podcast of Secret Friends Unite. I'm your host, Todd Oxtra, joined by the Canardian, Mark Carabin. How are you doing, buddy? I'm good. I'm really good. I'm, uh, as always, excited to talk video games and excited that we have a special guest. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. How are you? Great. Yes. Uh, so we have added to our co-op couch... Angela Castandi from Seasoned Gaming. Angela, you were highly recommended by uh, Mr. Luke Lore. We are <laughs> excited to have you on. First of all, give us your geek gaming origin. Thank you so much for having me, by the way. I love Luke. He's a great guy. Um, I So I started gaming, obviously this is aging myself, but I started gaming back in Atari days. Um, so I was playing like <laughs> make what was it called? Mega Mania, Kaboom, Fishing Derby. So I kind of grew up on those games. And then we were primary. We, we, we pretty much had every single console since then, um, but primarily Nintendo. So I, I played Nintendo games up until I got a PS3. So I'm oh, wow. fairly new to like, quote unquote, modern day gaming. Um, <laughs> but uh, I have always been gaming. <laughs> awesome. Oh, that's awesome. I yeah, My first thanks. console that I owned was the Atari 5200, so, which was not a very impressive thing because I think they had 12 games. So <laughs> <laughs> the 2600 got played a lot in our household as well. Um, that's that's awesome. And so you are a contributing writer. So yeah. my wife well, was a journalist. She's a children's author. But she continues to tell me, it's not easy. Ideas are simple. Execution is hard. So when it comes to this, how did you get started? Did you get to choose your work? Well, I I have always enjoyed writing. I studied English. I have an English degree. Um, so it's something that I love and, and appreciate doing. Um, and I thought, so a little over a year ago, I thought, you know, I want to have my own gaming website where I write articles and maybe review games. And so I, I wrote on Twitter, hey, can anyone help me with this? And then... Season Gaming reached out and said, hey, we have a website. You're more than welcome to, you know, submit some of your work. So I did. And then I became a contributor. And I'm super happy to be on there because I love them. Um, I do get to choose what I'm what I want to write. Um, but we do kind of we have a, a group chat where we kind of discuss who's going to do which reviews. And so that we're not all doing the same thing. I do admit that I haven't written anything <laughs> in a little while. Um, I need to get back onto that, but, but I will. I will. I promise. Um, but writing opinion pieces is so much easier than it is to write a review for a game. So that's I I, I wanted to take a little break from game reviews. <laughs> Excellent. So we obviously can find your things at Season Gaming. People can find out more about you because I, I like the little interview piece they did on you. So that's great. That kind of leads us into a question from my yes. friend's daughter, Stella Nias. She loves gaming. She is a huge Minecraft fan. She really wants to get into modding, and it just blows cool. it, it blows our mind away. My son, Logan, was so into this. He showed me everything they could do. And just, But uh, her question was, she wants to know what you think about the viewpoint. Is it changing to have non-male characters as the lead? Yes, and I think that it's incredibly important that we have that. Um, I like the idea with Ubisoft games, with Assassin's Creed. We kind of have the choice. You can choose male or female, whichever you like. Mm -hmm. I know that every every time a game comes out with a female protagonist, there's always someone online you know, complaining, but... Um, I like it. It's I think it's really important. Uh, we have we have many games over the last few years that have had female protagonists. Horizon Zero Dawn. We've had The Last of Us. Part two has two. Um, although, well, we won't well, we won't get there. Yeah. <laughs> I have a lot to say about that game. Um, but you know, we 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 have we have a lot of female females as protagonists, and I think it's wonderful. I think um, you know like Lara Croft, we have strong females as leads. Mm -hmm. And I love that. I love that. I think it's, um, I think it's great for, especially young, young girls, you know, they have something to look forward to, to play as. And, um, you know, hopefully those characters are a good role model for them as well. 
I really like that uh, we are getting that different representation because there's uh, there, there's a couple of things that I like to do when I'm playing video games. And it depends on the game or maybe sometimes how I'm feeling. But sometimes I want the character to be an avatar for me. So I want – you know, I, I want to feel like I'm in the armor. I want to feel like I'm behind a gun or doing whatever. But other times I want to experience what it's like to be someone else and it's it, experience things from a different perspective. Um, and it's, it's kind of like that role playing bit for me. So I love seeing a bit more diversity, a lot more diversity in, in games and uh, Assassin's Creed. It's really cool to see kind of the canonical version of the of a few recent characters uh, be the female choice. And they, they have given you a choice, male or female, but uh, even if you let, like in the newest Assassin's Creed game, if you let the Animus decide, it's female through the game, and it only switches to male when you're in those, like, kind of trippy, uh, I don't know, whatever kind of sequences kind of thing, and then it flips over to male, and there's the canonical reasons for that. Um, but it, it is kind of really... You know, it's it's neat. It's 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 uh it's cool to see that from other perspectives. And I, I read something today that they were even considering adding a female Slayer to Doom, which uh, I thought was kind of <laughs> interesting because you, you think of that, it's uh you know the Doom franchise is that kind of uh adrenaline, testosterone, like rip and tear kind of thing, and um. You know, I, I kind of like to see what they do with a female slayer and, and just someone <laughs> that's just going in there and just ripping and tearing right along with the best of them. I think that'd be really cool. But uh, the director of the game said that they'd have to and I don't know why, but they'd have to rethink uh, the weapons and glory kills or how it would impact that. But uh, that uh, it might be just the way they said that kind of came off weird, like they would want to change the style and change the weapons and like basically give another style of play, I guess. Um, but the, the first time I read it, it was kind of like, well, what are you saying like a female can't use a shotgun? What are you like? I don't know. It just came off really <laughs> weird. So, uh, I don't know. I hope that's not what they meant, but, uh, well, Mark, anyway. it's probably, they want more stylish kills cause men are not very stylish. So they yeah, have a little more it, right? flair to it versus just, you know, just <laughs> brute force maybe, you know, and, you know, <laughs> Yeah, I guess. I guess. I don't know. We'll we'll see. But uh, I, I think, yeah, the more the more choice or even not choice. I appreciate a game that just says like, yeah, no, there's no male protagonist. Uh, it's it's female. You're this character. This is what you know, this is how we want to tell that story. And again, that's that's the difference between, uh, you know, choosing a narrative as someone or that bit of role playing where you're putting yourself in, in, in the, the avatar's shoes. So, um, yeah, the, more, more diversity is always better. And, and back to what you were saying, Mark, when I, when I can choose my own characters, I always choose when I can, when I create a character, it's always a female. Mm. So it's just like, you know, you are kind of playing as yourself when you're doing RPGs, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, so, sometimes I've, I've, I've gone both, uh, and, and in Immortals Phoenix Rising, like my character's female, just because I don't know if I was influenced by the cover art there, or I preferred the female model in that game or something, but, you know, playing through that game, it was female. My brother picked it up and our characters are so different. Like his looks like almost Geralt of Rivia. <laughs> <laughs> just like it's white hair and he's like this big like you know spartan looking like warrior dude kind of thing with like the big beard and stuff and like i don't know mine's like this red-haired kind of badass greek chick and i like <laughs> very different yeah that's interesting in that game because i will talk about that later but i didn't even realize there you know, i know you could be a male but they have not done any advertising marketing for a meal a male version so it kind of no. seems like that that male is the afterthought just because you can they want to give you choice um so I, I like the fact that they can do that say oh yeah the guy yeah there's a dude be a dude if you want. <laughs> but um, it also kind of feels token like it feels i don't know like the, no one really bats an eye when there's a game that's you know you're 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 stuck with playing a male protagonist but if you're stuck playing a female it seems like they always like tack on the the male option just yeah. see, like they're they're scared or something and i love when studios are just like no this is like you're you're playing as a female like deal with it and that's that and uh but i, I wish more more studios would kind of like you know just 
stop being so scared and just tell the story you want to without feeling the pressure to add a token male option. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. I think if they're going to do it, make either, either way have some, a point, right? Not just yeah. one is the after, <laughs> make them both interesting. Something like that yeah. kind of like a mass effect, how that is finally developed where, uh, femme Shep, uh, the female shepherd character is now, uh, kind of basically iconic. And she, that, because people embrace that character so much, now she's available from the start in that iconic model. And that, to me, is fantastic. And that's how I'm going to play uh, Mass Effect Legendary Edition when I do. And um, it'll be great. Uh, but I was thinking about this, the medium, last episode, I played the medium. A female main character, very mm-hmm. strong, telling a strong st- a story, really, really well done. And I think of another game that, even though it's little, little 8-bit characters, it's Celeste. Celeste oh, is that. a extremely strong female character uh it's hard to see emotion in like i said an epic character but that story is very strong but it's also gameplay that's very difficult so um Mm -hmm. you can feel like you're a i'm trying sorry stella uh, if you can feel like a badass because your dad doesn't swear (laughs) (laughs) Uh, but you can feel like a badass that word on purpose (laughs) yeah but that's a game also where you can just play it for the story if you want or you can Mm -hmm. turn up the difficulty and go crazy so there you go um so any angela favorite female character in a game I might go with Lara Croft. All right. Love the her. the fixly one from the original version or the more <laughs> modern version? Modern. <laughs> right. All right. Have you seen that? No, I've not seen the Lara Croft movie, the newest version, but I've heard it's not bad. And, it, and basically it's that. So have you seen that? I haven't. I'm not much for movies. I much rather play video games. I getcha. Yeah. Totally. It takes a lot more time to it takes up a lot more time. <laughs> as I tell my friend who doesn't play video games at all, Charlie. Um uh, yeah, I could watch a, a, a lot of movies over and over again, or I could play a game and get first. So that's my choice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so awesome. Thank you for the answer to that, Stella. Obviously, uh, ask us more questions. I want to uh, know in- Stella's favorite female video Absolutely. game character as well. I hope uh, uh, I hope that she gets in touch and, and lets us know. She listens with her dad, and I had to laugh. You'll like this, Mark. Henry told Sean that Charlie needs to take care of the language. It's too strong. <laughs> Oh, no. oh, yes. <laughs> I keep uh, I keep having to put the explicit warning. I know, I know. Oh, yeah. uh, so maybe I'll I'll try to curb that, and if I can catch a couple, I even did one on the last episode. So I'm sorry. Uh, I got really excited about Anakin Skywalker uh, slash Darth Vader uh, doing a lot of really cool stuff. Um, so I apologize for that. I'll, I'll have to watch it. All right. Well, uh, we're getting into the main meat of the show, and that is what we've been playing. So, Angela, uh, what has got you uh, excited in the world of gaming right now? Well, I I just went back to The Division 2, and it looks excellent on the Series X. Um, Really enjoying playing through that again. Um, I've been playing Call of Duty Cold War. It does have quite a bit of issues on series x but i still enjoy it um and then i just started playing beyond good and evil so it's kind oh, of an old game, but... talk about another fantastic female <laughs> character that game is so good yeah I'm, I'm i'm a little lost i don't really know what i'm supposed to do next but <laughs> i'm getting well, you're, a, you're a you're a photojournalist in that game so just embrace it right uh, yeah yeah, yeah. And, and your uncle the pig and it's just it's a great game <laughs> <laughs> so I be, before we we move on to anything else, I, I do want to ask about some of the issues for Call of Duty because I've heard I haven't played the the newest Call of Duty, but those those games are usually kind of visual showcases. I've heard a few people say they're they're a great next gen visual showcase. They're one of the few games on Xbox that actually does cost more money for the next gen version, and it's not just smart delivery. Uh, so what kind of issues are you experiencing? I'm really curious about this and and kind of if it's impacting the game or if you're still you said you're still really enjoying it. So I am. And I actually wrote the review um, for season gaming for Cold War uh, for the campaign. And I unfortunately was not able to finish the campaign. Oh, no. For my wow. review. It, it, there was one point in the game where I just crashed, but it didn't just crash to the main home screen it completely shut my xbox down and it did it over and over and over again it was really frustrating especially because Whoa. i did i did pre-order and pay this extra ten dollars for this game so seventy dollars you know, and i can't finish the campaign wow uh, i sidelined the game for a while i went through 
<laughs> Immortals, Phoenix Rising, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and then I circled back. And I was able to finish the campaign, which is amazing. Graphically, exactly what you said. It's an absolutely amazingly beautiful game. Graphics are top-notch. But playing the multiplayer, it crashes at least once per day. Oof. Usually when I'm in first place, you know. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> but um, We'll get to gaming pet peeves later. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, just, not being able to play your game because it crashes, that's like number one. Yeah, yes, exactly. That That's on there. Um, my thing is don't brag about how much money you've made in microtransactions if you can't fix your damn game. Mm. So, yeah. So, so from a review standpoint, how does something like that impact your review because that's the ultimate failure you that in my opinion right if people can't mm-hmm. play your game it doesn't deserve a high rating because it's like oh i got two hours in greatest two hours in the world and that was it i know and that's then that's exactly it i didn't want to give it a poor review because what i did play was enjoyable because i did get almost to the end before it, it quit on me um i i it was very difficult because I wanted to be honest and say, hey, this game is broken. But at the same time, I wanted mm-hmm. to say the part that does work is great. Um, and I, so I really should go back. Yeah. And especially nowadays where you hope or assume sometimes ridiculously, but but for the, for the most part, you, you kind of assume that these things are going to be fixed. You're playing a review copy. There might be a day one patch. There might be a day or a a month one patch if this is a big problem that's not fixed day one. Uh, But but the assumption would be usually for a big budget title, again, where they're bragging about how much they're making on microtransactions, that that sucker is going to be patched. So how do you put a review out that's like this is the best first four hours I've ever played it in years (laughs) and then the end literally shut my Xbox down (laughs) repeatedly? (laughs) Like, how do you you know, like that's got to be hard to balance. Yeah, but it, what's funny is other people are having the exact same problem on the Series X. Even my brother, his his was crashing in the same point. So it, it, thankfully it wasn't just me, but it really was a widespread problem. And wow. um, the the crashing in multiplayer now is is very quite frustrating. There's issues mm. sometimes with um, you know linking up with other friends, and I really would like to see them fix those problems. But I'm sure I'm sure it will never happen. <laughs> That's is so that weird. an Xbox yeah. problem, or is there other are there other people? Well, I saying played that's it. The I, same I beat it on the PlayStation Five, and yeah. I didn't have any issues. The one thing I've heard is that there's some issues with ray tracing. Like specifically, mm. ray tracing is causing the game to have a lot of issues. So I don't know if there's. I assume there's a way to turn off ray tracing in the menu. Maybe there isn't. I don't know. I haven't. I didn't play it on Xbox, but. Wow, that's that's yeah, that's frustrating. Especially if you want this to be your showcase game. And yeah, and to charge seventy dollars for something that's just to me is a. I would expect they, I would hope they would be able to give you a discount, but I know there's this weird thing about gaming. Like if you played more than four hours over two weeks, they don't let you, which is just a shame. Yeah, and it's fine. I mean, I've gotten my, I've definitely gotten my seventy dollars worth out of it. Um. <laughs> man, man, I expected more rage because that would be. <laughs> Mark Mar- Todd is not a forgiving gamer, so. <laughs> It's ready now. Yeah. Oh well. It, it's fun. I mean, and the campaign is really great. There is a mission in there that's excellent. Um, I don't want to give any spoilers, but uh, oh, the branching paths are really cool too. You can go back and do different hits. It's really cool. Did you? Oh, I will say this: if you do eventually get to play it, at the end of the game, you can make a different choice. Yes, I, I did finish it. Okay. I did. Oh, you finish. did. Okay, yeah, great. I went back okay. and finished it. Yeah. Did you do the other path too, or no? No, just the one so far. Oh, oh, oh. definitely do, and it allows you in the okay. save file, which is great. They allow you to go back very quickly and to make that change if you want. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Thanks. Todd's <laughs> pro tip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Love it. Because I'm not very good at gaming, but at least I can give you that. Anything else, Angela? Uh no, just just playing those three right now, and you know, here and there on the Switch, but. Awesome. So, Mark, uh, you've been playing with some dinosaurs? I have, yeah. Uh, So I noticed Jurassic World Evolution on Game Pass. It was one of those games that I love Jurassic Park. I love Jurassic World. uh, I've always loved dinosaurs. 
but I've never been one for like those kind of park simulator grow and maintain a amusement park kind of game tycoon kind of whatever. Uh, but I said, Hey, it's on game pass. So I'm going to go mess around with some dinosaurs for a couple of minutes. And, uh, there's, you know, it, it makes no difference really. Uh, I got super hooked on this game and I don't know if it was the dinosaurs that did it for me or whatever, but I have never stuck with like a, a buildy park simulator kind of game ever, <laughs> but this one did it for me. Uh, I've unlocked several different islands because you, you kind of unlock different islands around like the Jurassic world kind of things. So like um, you like the original Island, the Jurassic park two Island, like all that kind of like a, a new kind of Island. Like, so um, yeah, I've unlocked a bunch of them. I've unlocked a bunch of different dinosaurs. My parks were thriving and all this. Like it's, uh, it's good, man. It's uh, I'm, I'm impressed. It's um, yeah, it's, I don't know if I'm going to stick with it too, too much longer because, you know, I get to that part where it's like, you know, they start throwing really weird little things at you. Like the, the Island I just unlocked uh, most recently they started me at like a almost a million dollar deficit. So I was just like, how am I supposed to just dig my way out of this one? Like start me at zero you have a lawsuit or something, or something like, Mark. Yeah. I don't know. And like, <laughs> somebody die and you had, or did somebody get eaten? I guess. And, and that happens. Like I did lose a ton of money when the, the idiots broke into a Raptor cage. Uh, that was not pretty. Um, I had to double pen my Raptors. I don't know if it was a glitch or something, but like people kept getting into the Raptor pen and I was like, I like, there's no gate now where they were. I don't know. Uh, it was so weird, but yeah, I basically ended up like double penning my Raptors. Why are people going into the rap? <laughs> I don't know. I can't even explain how they were doing it. Cause there was no entrance point where they were, but like it happened repeatedly before I figured out where the people were going. Cause I kept checking up on my gate and then they'd just be like, another person has died. Another person has died. I was like, where are these people coming from? And these idiots were going into the raptor cage. So, yeah, I had to double pen that one. But that was the only real, like, weird glitch that I experienced with this. Um, anyway, it's it's a fun game. If you like simulators or, hey, if you're like me and you don't, but you just love dinosaurs, uh, check it out. Once you unlock uh, the original island, like, uh, that's just kind of free play god mode, which is cool. So... Yeah, play it until you do that, and then you can just you can just have a blast. Um, I'm gonna save the next one for a, for a second. I, I did I, in in my list. I wrote down Immortals next, but I'll save that for a second. Uh, cause <laughs> yeah, I, I, Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. I've been playing both. I've spent way more time on 3D World uh, because my wife and I have been playing it together. It is a great co-op mode and it's also probably going to be the first thing listed in our divorce papers so a <laughs> whole lot of fun uh until it's not so um <laughs> uh, no that, it's a great game it's just uh, sometimes frustrating when uh when you realize that sometimes you need to communicate more um with friends or or spouses uh but it's it's just as much fun as it was on the the wii u yes i double dipped for this one um, Bowser's Fury is a whole lot of fun and I'm sure Todd will have a little bit more to say about that as well. Uh, especially considering what you did and the video you sent me, <laughs> I'll leave you to explain that one. Um, but I've also been back to Immortals Phoenix Rising, which I know Todd you have as well. Uh, and I'll get into something that ticked me off. A little bit later, uh, this might roll into something we're going to talk about later, but yeah, I lost uh, a couple of days worth of my save file, Oops. including the auto saves, the manual saves, no online backups because the save files were corrupted. There was nothing. I straight up lost. Uh, what was yesterday? The 21st. Uh, so I went back to the 17th. So I lost, I'm going to say a good three to five hours of gameplay on this one, uh, like running around, unlocking armor sets. There was like armor sets, uh, <laughs> weapon and ability upgrades that I unlocked a uh, whole bunch of collectibles, like a ton. Cause that was what I was like mainly focusing on, like going around collecting Umbrosia, collecting armor, collecting this and that. Uh, so I just, I just lost everything. And uh, anyway, including so your sanity. The, in, oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. The, the, <laughs> the string of curses I sent to my brother, cause he's been playing it too and, and singing its praises. And that made me excited to go back to it. So um, yep. That's uh, that's that one. We'll 
Anyway, you've been playing Immortals too, Todd. So let's hear about that. Your, your I stuff. have, and it's the first game I have beat in 2021. Because uh, it kind of bled over from 2020. Uh, Angel, it was our game of the year because we do our game of the year. Basically, we do a top five and essentially whatever is uh, the highest of that's the same game is our game of the year. And this was both our game of the year. Um, we got a code from Bethesda or, or from Bethesda, geez, Ubisoft Canada, uh, <laughs> and which led me to an issue because I got a review code, Mark. Apparently, it was locked and not updating at all. Like it was the test oh. version. So I had to go in to do this on PC and I talked to the support people. If you go into the settings... Essentially, you unlock a non-locked, non-editable, non-whatever uh, version of the game, which hmm. then allowed all of the updates to finally happen in the game. I couldn't wow. access the store. I couldn't do anything. So I'm like, finally, it happened. It was great. So I'm glad that's over. The DLC is there, so I can play the DLC. But I beat the game, and I put probably about 45 hours into it. By no means did I squeeze every bit of juice out of that game. There's so much more I could do. So many more of the temples so much more of the things I could collect, um, the trials. I'm, I'm dumb, and maybe you, you two have figured this out. I can't figure out the musical puzzles, like with the liar. Are you just supposed to bang on them or something? I shoot them with arrows. Because I feel like nothing's happening. I don't know. Uh, so you get different like, different songs. Like there's, So there's yeah. small, small ones all around the island. So anytime I see one of those, uh, I'm sorry for anyone that follows me on Xbox because I'm always clipping – the the video when when i i see one of those in the wild so then i can go back and look at my phone and be like okay it's you know the second string the fourth string the first string the third string the second string and i just watch that and i shoot the corresponding strings with arrows and then something happens so that's that's basically how i've been doing it if there's an easier way someone please tell me because i'm probably not the smartest but uh it works i don't know done more than me mark because I'm like, <laughs> I hit it with my axe, and I'm like, make music, make music. <laughs> That's not how you make music. Um, yeah, I, I would remind me never to go to a, a music store with you. Just like Todd, I could just see Todd going up to like the violins or something and hitting, hitting everything with an axe and be like, play music, come on. <laughs> it doesn't work. If it was a trumpet, please, sir, you owe us forty thousand dollars for those violins, and please never return, Whoa. especially not with an axe. So, yeah, so um, I, I beat the game. Um, I, I, I think we aligned on, we beat it on, I, I beat it on easy mode. Um, and unfortunately, it did get too easy because eventually I powered up too much. So I Yeah, I, I switched it back to normal yeah, after I yeah. started powering up. And now I'm back to, the, I'm back to easy because I you had switched it progress. to normal during my progress. <laughs> so I just, like, uh. yeah, it's the curse. It's the curse. But that, that's the what I wanted to be. I want to enjoy games. I don't want to be so frustrated. I can't get on there. We, we got, I got to a point where I'm like, I'm just dying all the time and I'm not a bad gamer, I don't think. Um, so yeah, so, but I enjoyed this game so much. The way the story wraps up, I won't spoil it or anything, but it was really nice culmination of everything that was there lots of little things and just the writing once again i know some people hate the writing but i enjoy it it's dad jokes it's goofy it's sadler and waldorf just having a good time yeah so, amazing yeah. yeah and i'll check out the the the, the dlc because like i got the season pass as well so as that goes out as i you know i'll dip back into that game because i enjoyed it so much and I'm, I'm excited to see where they go next i hope it did well enough that we'll get a sequel because it seems like this is a critical darling but maybe not a commercial darling, which is a shame. But. I really hope so. I really hope more people either pick it up on sale or I see, I think it's on sale again. I think there's a flash sale, Ubisoft flash sale going on. I saw uh, an Instagram ad popped up showing immortals and mm -hmm. uh, um, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. So with a, with a big flash sale. So I didn't check it out. I don't know what the prices are. And I don't even know if by the time people are listening to this, the sale will still be going on. Hopefully it is. But if you haven't checked out this game, seriously, check it out. It is uh, – I was talking to my brother about this yesterday, again, because he just beat it as well. And uh, we both said – like he picked up Assassin's Creed as well when he got his PS5. We both agreed the same thing. Uh, anytime we had a choice to play this game or Assassin's Creed – we kept going back to this game and it really talks to how like rich, funny, colorful, bright, and just engaging the world is. It's uh, it's such a great game for a first game in the series. I hope there's more um, just, yeah, come on. And actually I recommend this to Stella. 
because it is an all ages game. It's an mm-hmm. open world game, which there aren't many that are family friendly. This one, there is a couple of swears in it. But beyond that, I think it's a blast. And so, yeah. 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 Uh, Angela, you played Immortals. Any any thoughts on it? I did. It was my personal game of the year. Also, I want to see more of this from Ubisoft. I want to see more creativity and original games. Um, I did write the review on it. I actually gave it a nine and a half out of ten. It was Ooh. excellent. It's very funny, extremely well written. I loved it. <laughs> I will say it's another one of those games where you have a horse as an option, and I never use the horse. Sorry. Oh, really? <laughs> never did. That's another thing I lost. I lost my zebra. <laughs> <laughs> if you well, Which did you sound, tame it? <laughs> yeah, I did. So that's that's one of the in the the, oh, the, the lost, lost save state. file thing. So I have um, a unicorn and a Pegasus kind of thing. <laughs> Which are great, and they're my my the horses I usually use. Uh, but I was so excited because I heard uh, a zebra, and I was like, "That sounds like a zebra," because I was kind of climbing up the thing. Zebras sound different than horses. Oh yeah, I I've been learned. I did not know <laughs> <laughs> enough that I recognized it when I was. Uh, yeah, it's it's way more like high pitched and, and it's very different. It's more clicky. Uh, anyway, uh, so I was climbing this this hill, and my wife was sitting next to me. I was like, "That sounds like a zebra," and she's like, "What?" Why do you know what a zebra sounds like and exactly. why would they be in this game? So I hit the top of the mountain and, and there, sure enough, there's zebras running around. So I spent a good five minutes chasing those around until I caught one. And uh, I was super happy that I caught a zebra. And it was not quite as good like because, you know, the horses are all tiered. So I think this was a tier two versus my my mythical ones that are like tier three. But I was still very happy that I caught a zebra. And now that zebra is gone. And uh, I'm very sad. I think that's going to be the name of the episode. It's going to be The Call of the Zebra. The Call. Because <laughs> right. I'm just blown away. Uh, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, yeah. Can't wait to play more when more of the DLC is out. I will come back to the game. Um, Bowser's Fury. Um, I have not played any 3D World because I already beat that game, but my son wants to play. He says, Dad, when a 15 year old kid says he wants to play with his dad, I'm like, of course. So we're going to play that game because he's really excited to play it. We, he played it when we had the Wii, but he wants to go back to it. And I'm excited, too, because um, that's a, a great opportunity. Great game. Really enjoyed it. Different type of Mario game. Um, but Bowser's Fury, it's really different in regards to it's not a complete 3D game, but it's not a complete 2D game. It's not completely Odyssey, but it's doing some different things um, because there's no attack button. Mario doesn't kick things. Mario doesn't punch things in this game. You can swirl uh, or twirl, I guess we would call it. Um, <laughs> but that's about it. And then you get a lot of different power-up suits. Um, you do get power-up suit, obviously, that allows you to attack boomerang, cat, things like that. Um, I'm not very far into it, um, but it's it's a, it's just a cool experience that I hope this isn't a one-off. I hope it's more of something that's coming, kind of like Captain Toad. Captain Toad was introduced mm. in a 3D world, and then it got its own game. Um, I'm hoping this becomes the next 3D Mario game, like an expansion, or it's 3D Od- Odyssey with some of these elements incorporated as well. Um, more of an yeah. open world. Um, yeah, you, you have to think the giant Bowser uh, that's almost kind of gave off uh, Blood Moon vibes from Breath of mm-hmm. the Wild. Um, I, I Yeah, you have to think they're playing around with some mechanics for the next full 3D Mario game, but... Uh, I really like this. I've put probably, I'm going to say probably only about two hours at this point. I heard it's about a six hour experience. So I'm yeah. not quite halfway there. Uh, like I said, I've been putting a ton of time in the, the uh, 3D world, but uh, it is a really neat little like mashup of Odyssey and 3D world style with like the power ups and stuff from 3D world and the full camera range of motion. It's It's neat. Yeah, I'm I'm fully enjoying it. I can't wait to play more. Um, I'm getting my uh, 3D platforming uh, hooks back into this game. Um, it is kind of neat that you can play it co-op if you want with uh, Bowser Jr. Is that what his name is? Koopa Jr.? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so you can play it single player, or you can do it. Uh, the second player can play this, and this would be perfect for like younger players to play as the yeah. the person where they can attack, or and they allow you to choose how much that this person 
the, the, the secondary character does for you, which is great because you can adjust that and have fun with it. But I didn't realize at first how you get the character to do things. And I'm like, oh, you pulled in the bumper and you you kind of have an aim feature, mm-hmm. which is different. So, yeah, yeah. kind of frustrated Loren, actually, when we were playing that. So because uh, and maybe it's because we started with 3D World. But mm-hmm. when she she got to choose Bowser Jr. and the camera was only following me. So she kind of got lost a couple of times because she just went completely off camera and it was kind of like oh you know i'm I'm basically just an assist role so i think she kind of went back to her uh her lego harry potter and and let me play that one myself yeah it seems like they should have done like the lego way they do co-op where it kind Mm -hmm. of it it kind of the screen grows yeah so you don't feel like you're left off so yeah that seems i haven't had that experience yet because i only played a single player but i really like Mm -hmm. it and playing as the mega saiyan mario yeah, lots so fun. Cool. and yeah. bowser looks so cool as a godzilla type character so um yeah i i, I really can't uh, i mean i'm gonna enjoy this as much as i can i don't know if i'm gonna beat 3d world it's a rental from gamefly but um we're gonna have a lot of fun with it as we play it so yeah it's 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 a great this will this may be my only nintendo game i play this year which is a precursor to what we'll talk about in the news but um yeah there we go um then um lastly destiny 2 i'm getting back into destiny 2 um, that's why I got a Series S because I wanted to play Destiny 2, didn't want to pay for it, and it's not on uh, Xbox Game Pass for PC. I don't know, is that what it's called? <laughs> it's got a long <laughs> name of things, um, and that's still been a disappointment that uh, Xbox Game Pass for PC is still lacking. There's no EA Play yet, no Destiny 2 yet, which are the, like the two biggest additions still mm-hmm. lacking. So I'm playing it here, although I feel like with Destiny it just feels like they change so much all the time. You truly don't know what the hell's going on. Like at this point, I'm like, I wanted to play um, the last expansion. The, the last expansion I played was Forsaken. So I wanted to just play these in order. Shadow Keep mm. was the next one. And essentially, you can play the missions, but they've taken things away and they've done these things. So I'm like, I kind of feel like you don't really get a great experience as a new player of all the past content, which is just yeah. a shame. And maybe it'll come back, but I kind of feel like um, I want to experience some of those things because I like the story in Destiny. I'm one of those rarities. I'm not a huge multiplayer. Uh, I will play. I've raided before. I've done a lot of the PvP. It's one of the few games I've done that in. Um, but my core is the uh, story mode and the gameplay there. So, uh, And I do like to play with others cooperatively and have just fun with it. So um, I'm hoping I will get more into it. And my son's kind of my Sherpa because – he is like, Dad, what happened to your character? What happened here? And I'm like, I don't know. I played the Warlock. I played the – he goes, but Dad, you've got no stuff. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't have any stuff because I played all Destiny 1 with a Warlock, and there's, like, no history now in my characters. It's so weird. Hmm. It just – yeah. It's But it's it's funny. It's the game I put the most time into on my PS4, um, Destiny 1. And the game is now – God, it's going on seven years old now. So it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, that's the so, reason I bought a PlayStation 4. Yeah, yeah. So, Mark, have you been playing any more Destiny or going to get back no, in? No, I really have to get back in. I, I do have it downloaded from Game Pass, and I, I made sure all the the uh, the DLC bits were downloaded because I think they're separate things. Uh, but I haven't fired it up, so I'm going to have to and jump okay, in with you Well, uh, yeah, jump in with us. I'd love to play with you. Well, yeah. uh, that sounds sexual, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to scurry through the hills with you, my friend. Uh, yes. yes, and do that. So, uh, yeah, that's what I've been playing. So um, can't wait to talk more in two weeks. Obviously, we do this every two weeks, so we'll have more games to talk about in the future. So hopefully uh, you guys can tell us what you're playing as well in the world of games. But now we get into the news, and we've got a bunch of little, little uh, bits and pieces. And we'll actually get to the bits and pieces first, because... Because first of all, I want to talk about a little movie called Mortal Kombat. Cue the music. Yeah. <laughs> Please I'll insert the music there. That oh, music gets me so it. pumped up every single time. <laughs> oh man. Uh, so this this trailer was every single thing I wanted from a Mortal Kombat trailer since like 1995. And I love that first 1995 movie, even though it is absolutely terrible. And I just watched it uh, maybe a month or two ago, and it still doesn't hold up, but it's still delightful uh, in as, as bad as it is. Um, and this this new one, though, oh, man, did they ever just come out swinging? And uh, it looks like a perfect mix of like 
campy stupidity and blood and guts and violence and they don't seem to be holding anything back and uh, after the trailer was released the director was saying like they just like the the fatalities were in it from the start like the first draft of the script like there was fatalities they were killing people off they're just like no holds barred just go for it do whatever you want um i am so excited for this and it comes out soon so i'm i'm just i'm buzzing yeah, it's going to be on HBO Max for free um, and in theaters. So perfect uh, for anybody who just wants to jump in. Um, I did see the original Mortal Kombat in college, Mark. I'm old. And I blew <laughs> my mind away. I remember when Mortal Mo- Monday came out when I was in college and people in the quad <laughs> screaming, Mortal Kombat. I mean, just it just it, the game was a phenomenon. I think people forget that. And, the, and once again, this is a series that's been around for god i mean since 1991 i believe so this, this mm-hmm. series has longevity there wasn't even a saturday morning cartoon in mortal Kombat, so i don't even understand i can't believe i played like i was 10 when this movie came out so that means i was playing the game and watching the movie because i think i i don't think i don't know if i saw this in theaters i don't think i was i was allowed to but i definitely saw it like soon after it came out on vhs like 100 percent and yeah, that, it's funny when you said you said you saw that movie in in college and we were talking about this earlier this week and like it's not that big of an age gap. When you, I say I was 10 and you were in college, it sounds way bigger than it is. But now, like, it, whatever. Uh, it's Yeah, it's, it's so funny. But, like, even that, like, a, an eight or 10 year uh, age gap, it's like when you put it. Mark, in I would have been, terms, I could have been like, your babysitter. And that's just weird. I know. Yeah, it's, <laughs> to, it's, it's, it's a weird thing. Like, uh, yeah. for sure. Yeah. 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 So, Angela, Mortal Kombat history with the series. You know, I played it a little bit growing up, but. I never really got super into it, and I haven't played anything recently of it. <laughs> Sorry. Right, right. Crap ton what of were your first thoughts here. seeing the trailer? Uh, it looks looks interesting. I don't necessarily. I'm not so much of a movie person, but I don't necessarily mind uh, video game movies. So. Yeah. Think you're gonna cool. see this one, or just kind of hold off? I'll hold off on it for a little while. It's not gonna right. be a day one movie for me. <laughs> Well, there are a lot of strong female characters in this movie, literally. Absolutely, and they yeah. will kill yeah. you and eat your face, and yeah, do lots of bad one, things. To you. One strong female character that sadly will not be in this movie is Chun Li. <laughs> 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 oh. oh, did you guys so see any of that shit? Yes. Sorry yes. for my language, but like, oh my goodness. <laughs> This like if anyone's listening and doesn't know what I'm talking about, this feminist, uh, I guess like feminist website or something like that. I'm not even familiar with the publication. I just like saw things going on Twitter and I guess they wrote this whole article and got all up in arms that they had taken Chun-Li out of the Mortal Kombat movie. And for anyone that's just listening and being like, why is that a thing? Yeah. Chun-Li's from Street Fighter, a completely different franchise. Also, she's in Fortnite right now, her and, uh, and Ryu. Uh, and they're awesome. And uh, but anyway, yeah, so she's in Fortnite, but not sadly in the Mortal Kombat movie, Uh, although I would take a Mortal Kombat Street Fighter crossover movie any single day of the week. Let's make that shared universe. Someone get on it. Uh, Anyway, so there we go. Did they not have a crossover at any time? Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat? Seems like every every fighting game did. I don't know. It's a good question. I'm just looking it up really quick because I, because right. I, I, you know we had what Capcom versus uh, SNK. We had yep. uh, Capcom we versus had, Marvel. Uh, Marvel. We've we had, had uh, Injustice, which was kind of Mortal Kombat versus uh, DC. Oh, they used to have that Mortal Kombat versus DC. Remember that game? Mm-hmm. God, I mean, so yeah, so maybe they didn't. I don't know, but everybody seems like they've crossed over at one point. But mm. yeah, that was just so funny. But to your point, like some people, Mark, some people want to get outraged. Um, <laughs> and but the weird part about this, this director has directed two things. First thing was Nighttime Economy in 2014, a video short. This is his first movie ever. I love it. <laughs> Why do you trust a person with no <laughs> directing credit credits at all, TV or anything, to direct your multi-million dollar movie it's just so weird that's super strange yeah yeah i'm excited i think this looks good and it's funny that we're finally getting a movie or a media of the game that actually matches the brutality as the game does because in the past they were like pg-13 didn't really show gore and things like that but this one they are so kids when sub-zero like cuts that guy and then uses the his own blood 
to turn like oh, freeze and turn crazy. into a knife. I was like, <laughs> what is actually happening? And why am I so excited? I've seriously watched this trailer like 18 times. Uh, it is, oh man, I can't wait. I just hope we get babalities and friendships too. A hundred percent. I'm kind of sad that there's no, uh, in the trailer at least. And I don't know, I haven't looked up the cast list or literally anything other than the trailer. Cause I just want to go in, uh, somewhat blind, but I needed to watch the trailer just to, set my expectations because uh, it could have been terrible. Um, but no, no Johnny Cage. Uh, I'm, I was really kind of, you know, waiting to see some mustache uh, or uh, sunglass wearing, like kind of knob uh, <laughs> walking around in this, uh, this trailer, but uh, no such luck. Oh, there's going to be so many little, little cameos and things. Mark. I think so. Just, yeah. just you we'll, we'll see a poster or something and oh, yeah. in the sequel. Exactly. Johnny Cage in Mortal Kombat or something like this, some like some throwaway. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, yeah. Uh, so uh, hopefully everybody's excited about that. That's coming very soon. Once again, it's on HBO Max. So be excited for that. Um, man, oh, man, Microsoft out of the blue. And I it was funny because I've always said, is Microsoft going to finally get into the headset game or high end headset games? Because we've had the elite. I think I might even talk about it here, but their headset they've had is pretty low rent. It's like 60 bucks wired doesn't do much. Sony's been doing different versions of their headset. They have a lot of high end headsets, not that our PlayStation ran it either. And all of a sudden they drop this headset that's coming out uh, for Xbox. It is Bluetooth and using the Xbox proprietary wireless standard as well. So the cool thing about this is you can connect it to Bluetooth and the Xbox at the same time. So you can go Discord, you can listen to music or whatever on your phone, you can take calls on your phone and not have to worry about that. So that's very cool. Um, It's also got a boom mic. It's got, um, I believe the controls are actually just big old on the dials on the, on the ear cups itself. It's understated. And, and they're, they're, they're separate as well. One's volume, yep. the other one's chat volume. Which is perfect. So you can, yeah, you can kind of mix uh, very quickly without going into any menus, which is, which is an awesome and, and under talked about feature. Absolutely. Because in the past, the only way you could get like volume controls um, with games is they used to have the, what the Xbox headset adapter that plugged into the bottom of the uh, controller and had little volume <laughs> buttons. I mean, come on. I still yeah. use that. Well, are, doesn't it feel like we're in the dark age of controllers at this point? Unless you want to unless you want to spend like 150, 200, 250 dollars. It seems like a lot of these features that you would hope would just be there are just have been neglected. So um, I'm excited about this because once again, it's it's dongleless, which that's such a weird term. <laughs> but, yeah, there's no dongles. It's just connecting that way to all your devices, which means still, though, that uh, the switch it won't work for the Switch because yep. the Switch doesn't have Bluetooth baked in. But I don't – does this have a wired option? I don't know. Uh, that's one thing I haven't been able to confirm uh, because I, I I have been wondering about that. And, and I've, I've gone through my headphone disasters and and ups and downs on this podcast. Uh, but maybe let's, let's get to Sean's question I think maybe first, and that will yeah. tie into the rest of the conversation here. Yeah, so Sean Nias asked the question about what we think about this headset and kind of what's the state of gaming headsets as it is. Um, And so at this point, we've got Xbox now finally announcing this headset, which seems like it's pretty good for 100 bucks, Mm -hmm. 15 hours, does all these different features and connects to PC uh, via Bluetooth, Xbox and also Bluetooth devices as well. Um, We've got the PlayStation uh, PS. 3D Pulse headset, which I own, which uses a dongle. So it's not dongle-less, but it is wired if you want to hook up to any type of 3.5 millimeter uh, thing. But the dongle can go in the Switch, PC, or PlayStation. Um, and then Nintendo has nothing, except you, you a squid <laughs> dongle, I think, is what they've got, essentially. Uh, yeah. yeah, so it's very weird. But beyond that, then you've got Astro uh, the Astro series, which is high end, the Steel series, Arctis, Razer, Astro. Am I missing anything else, everyone? Yeah, I mean, there's a million headphone companies and adapt, you know, and and just little things you can find on Amazon. But I guess the, those would be the the big ones. Um, I when when I saw this, I said, of course they're going to release their own headset just a couple of weeks after I bought another new one for myself. Uh, but the things that we were talking about, the the you know not 
being able to use this on switch uh unknown about the 35 millimeter uh just being able to plug it into something even if the battery runs out still using it on your xbox being able to plug it directly in the controller i assume that that's a feature on this thing but uh, i'm not 100 percent sure right now uh for my money the the head and this might be just <laughs> uh justifying my purchase uh but for about the same price you can get an arctis steel series one or like the one i got the one x which is a slight slight variation on the arctic uh the steel series arctis one uh the the difference with this one the, the it is a dongle but the dongle only switches between xbox and bluetooth that means i can plug this little usb c dongle into my switch when it's in handheld mode there's also a usb adapter kind of a cable uh, so USB-C on one end, USB-A on the other. That's what plugs into the Xbox, the PlayStation, or the Switch when it's in docked mode. Uh, it also works with USB-C on my iPad. So I can basically use this headset for every single thing that I do. Uh, it's got great battery life, great microphone, great sound quality. Uh, not not uh, too many like bells and whistles, but like for the same kind of price, I think this was... I don't know, 120, 130 Canadian. So probably about a hundred bucks for you guys, I think right, right around there. Um, the steel series Arctis one X or yeah, for, for me, for a cross platform gamer, that's still my favorite. And it doesn't have like the Bluetooth being able to hook it up to your phone and the Xbox and that kind of stuff. But um, if you're looking for something to play on Switch, Xbox, PlayStation, across whatever, uh, I'm I'm super impressed with this one. And it's very, very easy to switch over because I was playing on my Switch, literally took the dongle off, flipped to the Xbox, plugged it in, and I was good to go. So, um, yeah, it's I don't I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not quite as shaken up about this Xbox specific one uh, just because, like you said, there's there's no easy way to change between like xbox switch playstation like nobody gets along in the headset space it drives me crazy no angela what do you use for headsets i have seven headsets what? holy i thought i was I, bad one for yeah. every day of the week that's really exactly. what it is. a different color match it with your outfits yeah i like i prefer wireless but with the series x there's this this is actually one of my pet peeves it's that fake interference uh, maybe I'm sitting too far away from it, even though I'm not. Um, so I went back to wired. So I have this Turtle Beach wired. I actually just got it and I love it. It's great. Um, it does what I need it to do. But again, it, I have to plug in that little adapter in the bottom of the controller <laughs> with the volume button at the on the uh, adapter. And that adapter's not cheap either. I mean, I think my friend found it for 40 bucks. Sean had to spend 40 bucks. And I'm like, that's ridiculous. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, I thought and I thought Bluetooth <laughs> when they added Bluetooth to the uh to the xbox i thought that would solve it i thought playstation would solve it mm -hmm. but nobody solved it to your point um and i use i've got right now in my head a uh, playstation golds that i'm just hooking mm -hmm. up wired now that i don't use anymore because my cats have been chewing it my son is the worst thing in the world when it comes to headsets because he keeps on stealing them my pulse he's got that constantly with him plugged into his phone I'm like what are you doing it's so nice i'm like oh you're killing me, joe <laughs> never plugs it in so it's never charged so it's just it, so i did order the xbox headset because i'm like you know regardless and i hope it is wired too because then i can use it wherever i want to go um and it's one way or the other and i like the fact that it supports mm -hmm. apps and things like that um the one the one version mark of, of the arctis is the 7x yeah uh, is the other one i'm interested in too that's 150 dollars mm -hmm. similar has a USB C dongle and it has a it's like i think we said it says an xbox switch or usb and it's like whatever you hook into does that have to switch too i would have yeah. jumped up i didn't think that switch it back does. and forth. damn it, it does it has <laughs> xbox and usb so it'll oh, work on much everything under the sun as well so I, I don't know beyond the difference but that's the problem every there's like oh you got the wrong one and you yeah. feel like you're beating yourself up. And I mean, it's that's like why I went with the one yeah. X. I would have jumped up in quality. Uh, I, I was ready to spend whatever I needed to to get something yeah. that went across multiple platforms. And uh, and they, they don't sell that as much as a feature for that headset. Oh, and I oh, had to get I had to get recommendations. Not... I'm like, why does this one matter? And how do they do it? And I'm like, and I look at this little dongle and I'm like, it's a cute little dongle. Mm -hmm. But it's like it's USB-C versus 
A or whatever. But I mean, yeah. So there you go, guys. Um, I don't know if there's like I said, if if the Xbox does support a wired, that will cover X amount of your options. Mm-hmm. Uh, same thing with the pul- the Pulse 3Ds. That'll cover most of your options as well. And the headset mark recommended covers most of your options. So there's a lot of options out there. And it's funny, the people that bought the high end, like the Astro 250s or whatever, they have like a breakout box and things like that. Mm-hmm. Well, those people are mad because almost all the systems removed optical, yeah. uh, which is what they use to get the, the audio. Um, they ended up having an adapter. So I think they still support that for some headsets, not all. So I think we the just need to gold work with my switch too. Yeah. When when my my golds were were actually functional, uh, they're not now. But uh, that dongle worked. It just plugged yeah. into USB A and and worked docked. Of course, it doesn't work yeah. uh, handheld. But handheld, you have the option for the wire. So um, yeah, they are pretty versatile. Yeah. So hopefully somebody will eventually solve this problem. But until then, um, they just want you to spend more money. So. Save your money, folks. I, I've been telling my son that. Save your money because he will get his own eventually, hopefully. Um, then we get into the uh, the specific stories we wanted to talk about. So, Mark, uh, Nintendo had their Direct. Mm-hmm. Oh, my goodness. So, Angela, did you watch the Direct? No, but I did go back later and read about what was shown. <laughs> okay. Mark is going to walk us through working. the Direct. Yeah. You know, Mark is going to walk us through the Direct. Yeah, I'm not going to go through everything because it was a big direct. It was 50 minutes long. So if you want to uh, if you want to go back and watch the whole thing, I'm going to recommend doing that. I thought overall it was a pretty good direct. There was something for everyone. Uh, my wife and I both watched it. I was excited about some things. She was excited about others. My brother and I were texting and he was excited about some things that I wasn't. So it was there, there was something there for everyone. But as far as like big boom kind of announcements i didn't feel like they really kept it so it was good not great uh for the first direct in over 500 days or something crazy like that uh a lot of people were expecting this to just hit home run after home run after home run but i mean i don't know i don't know if that's setting your expectations too high or what because uh you know it's it's COVID. i think things are different things you, you can't always have these home runs so i think um, this is just kind of what we got. And I, I said, like, it's, it's pleasing to the masses. So uh, a couple of things that stood out for me, Splatoon 3. What, I mean, I had a Splatoon podcast with, uh, with Bobby, who apparently mm-hmm. is, is, uh, is, is doing pretty good. Uh, yeah. Not pretty good, 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 but off ventilators. He, he's making progress, right? He's making progress. In the hospital, going, yeah. And hopefully yeah. he'll be out or, or doing at least some, be recovered soon. Yeah, heading to rehab, I think, uh, soon. So uh, so our, our thoughts and prayers are still with uh, Mr. Nintendo Guru. So can't wait to hear his thoughts on Splatoon 3, hopefully pretty soon. Uh, the big controversial one, Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD, the Wii game that was, uh, you know, for the most part, pretty good. Like the original Zelda story tells where the Master Sword came from, ha- but had a lot of like filler quests. The controls kind of got the tiring after a while the motion controls so i'm glad they they've added the option in this to use uh the control sticks but i'm not sure how that's going to actually feel or translate to real gameplay so i'm I'm curious how this one's going to be i never finished that game my wii broke before i got to finish it and i just never uh went back when i got the wii u i wanted to play new and my shiny wii broke. Things. you know they used to be a joke i broke i broke my wii, my wii. yeah 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 my uh <laughs> My Wii doesn't work. Um, anyway, so <laughs> let's move on. We're disgusting. Uh, <laughs> you guys are chuckling. I'm just telling you my Nintendo doesn't work anymore. Uh, this Apex Legends, Fall Guys. I'm, I'm very excited for Fall Guys going multi-platform. The day after this Direct, they also announced it was going on Xbox. Very exciting stuff. But I'm wondering if the Fall Guys hype is over or if it going to a couple of new platforms might reinvigorate things. Cause that was a really fun game for like a week uh, on PlayStation, but it's not my, like PlayStation is just not my home. It's not my place to play. So I never stuck with it. I didn't have enough friends on PlayStation to, to just now that it's everywhere. Like my wife played it a little bit on PlayStation. She was like, I will pick that up on switch. My nephew will pick it up on switch. I'll be on my Xbox and we'll all just like have a fun time just playing Wipeout with, Little hot dog men, or and whatever the hell that is. Switch is probably the only gonna place, only place you'll probably pay full price for, unfortunately. Yeah, <laughs> probably. Um, 
I was super excited about Star Wars Hunters until I found out it was a Zynga or whatever that company's name. Like Zynga, that's but a joke. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think the biggest one, the big, big, big one, even more so than Splatoon 3 because we don't have a release date for that, uh, Mario Golf Super Rush. I freaking love the Mario Golf games. Uh, how do you guys feel about uh, any of these? Or, or did anything else stick out to you guys from this? Or, or uh, how'd, you, how'd you feel? Go ahead, Todd. <laughs> well, I, I will tell you what made my son the most excited, which is just the most lame thing in the world, but he's my son. I love him anyways. Metopia. He loved it really? on 3DS. <laughs> and it's the fact wow. that this game is coming out now, and it's got, like, a, a great-looking horse. That's what the only thing people are commenting on. And they made a horse joke in the direct. So, you know what? But it's $50. Mm-hmm. This is my this is my problem with Nintendo as a whole. Nintendo was the worst value equation of any platform. They charge way too much. They don't discount their games. Um, and to me, that's frustrating. I've already talked about how uh, Animal Crossing, for me to actually get on that game and have my own copy, it would cost me at least $260 to $360. They are not consumer friendly at all. They they or they're, they're like getting Super Mario items. Exactly. I know, uh, I can't wait. So you have to go out and spend yeah. three hundred dollars. Yeah. Um, it's funny. It's if you've ever watched Futurama, there is a corporation called Mom, who is uh-huh. basically this this elderly kindly grandma, and that's her image to the public. But when she turns off the camera, she takes off her elderly woman dress and basically is the meanest woman in the world. And she's all about profit. I feel like Nintendo is like that and they get away with it. And I, and I appreciate that. that hey, I, their business team. But once again, it just frustrates me. Where is their classics line? Where is their player's choice line, Mark? It's been that long. They always do it. It's $20 games. So, yeah. Yep. Rant over. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, uh, yeah, I had a problem with Skyward Sword HD. Um, we just got three HD ports of Mario games for $20 a piece, if you round up to 60 that had changes so you could play on the Switch. This is essentially the same thing they're doing with Skyward Sword with no added content, like 3D World, you know, for $60. Or even like Wind Waker with this, like the, exactly. the Swift sale and, and yeah. like improvements and stuff. We haven't heard anything about that. And maybe there are. Maybe there and they will just be. left it out. But I, I, I see where you're coming from. Give us Link's crossbow training in, included. <laughs> That's exactly what we need to come back. Absolutely. So, yeah, it's just once again, it's, so it's a Zelda game that I, I stopped really early on the game because the pacing was horrible. It felt like my first Zelda where they just handheld you and told you, hey, Rupee, I don't you don't need to tell me. So I'm hoping they fix the pacing because maybe I'll go back into it. It's a it's a it's a rental for me. Um, the game that kind of stood out to me is it really and this felt like a very jrpg type of um nintendo direct because mm-hmm. we had project triangle which is very uh jrpg <laughs> uh, a lot of these uh, franchises felt that way and that's just not my personality what i'm into um there were some prizes like the neon white when they showed that game that was mm-hmm. by the team that made danganronpa i guess and it was just a weird like card based first person action game which is it was it made me angst anxious i guess when i watched it i'm like i can't control that um but beyond that um me and nintendo are on a break (laughs) (laughs) i couldn't pick that up from this conversation at all you shocked me todd surprise surprise yeah i'm the grumpy guy i yeah i just i I am happy though plants vs zombies is finally coming to this because i think that's a person a companion piece um i am a little disappointed we missed out on these classics in the japan direct the caligula effect too that sounds very kid friendly caligula kids love caligula <laughs> exactly <laughs> uh, <laughs> we were so, talking about girls and games earlier uh dc superhero girls oh, Teen yeah, hour my cute. wife was so excited she was like i want to play this that looks and awesome. she usually plays like a couple of games usually it's like whatever multiplayer game we're playing together uh or lego harry potter so this game caught her and got her excited uh so i'm i'm super excited for that uh angela what got you excited in this if anything i think fall guys i actually wrote that down fall guys um i think was was huge uh and then of course as silly as it is the animal crossing mario dlc <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> I still play Animal Crossing almost every day, so. <laughs> awesome. I, I will I will take one thing back. 
Knockout City surprised me. I don't think that game's going to do very well, but I thought it was just funny. It's a dodgeball game. Yep. And it's just 20 bucks. You get everything. There's no DLC or anything like that. Apparently, it's just play. And the fact is you can ball up your friend and throw him. So why not? I like that mechanic. I, yeah, I think that, that that game looked surprising, and I, I think it's going to be fun. I'm wondering if the $20 price tag is a, a smart decision or a bad decision. I'm wondering if they actually did go like the Fortnite route where – this game is free and then you could, you know, pay for DLC cosmetics or whatever. Um, I'm wondering like, yeah, I just, I just don't know if, if that's a good choice or a bad choice. I guess we'll see fairly soon. But uh, my thought when I saw this was like, Oh sweet. Yeah. I will jump in and play a few rounds and see if I want to spend money on this. And then it was like, no, you got to pay up front. I was like, okay. It's hard to break. It's hard to break through. I'm not, it's just, yeah, it's tough. Yeah. Yeah, it was it Ninjala was the one game that people thought was going to be like the Splatoon successor yeah. and eventually just kind of died on the vine. But yeah, yeah. It, it is interesting that Nintendo kind of did the uh, bait and switch when they said, oh, we'll only be talking about the first half of 2021. And then they drop all these games in 2022, like Splatoon mm-hmm. 3. So there you go. But yeah, yeah, I think Mario Kart shows a lot of promise in regards to what it could do versus uh, the, the the tennis game with having that rush mode and RPG mode. So it could be a lot oh, of fun. Mario Golf. Yeah. yeah. What did I say? Kurt. Okay, yes. Yeah. yeah, still three years. Uh, well, sorry. Three Splatoons will be out in the time that one Mario Kart's been out. Yeah, oh man, don't even get, <laughs> get me started on, on that shenanigans. Yeah. Uh, did, I, I tweeted out, I, I did the math. Um, how many days it has been since we got a, a new Wave Race game? Let me see if I can find, uh, find the, <laughs> the tweet here. Did you create an app for that, Mark? Uh, no, like I actually like counted days on a calendar no i'm just joking i said how many days since blue storm uh so at the time so this was four days ago so i had four days to this uh at time of recording or whatever anyway uh at the time it was 7032 days since we got wave race blue storm and it's been 2093 days since splatoon 1 was released so in those 2092 93 days we've got splatoon 1 and 2 and a third one announced on the way and 7,000 days since we've heard anything about Wave Race, and that is a darn travesty. Time for some Wave Race, love. I think that's probably that could be added to our pet peeve of you know Nintendo. That's my only pet peeve. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. no Wave Race. That's it. <laughs> Show yeah, I, and and I want to say um, happy 35th anniversary to The Legend of Zelda. Yeah. In Japan, not the U.S. Apparently, it was 18 months later in North America, which is mm-hmm. kind of crazy. And uh, Nintendo just said, here's a $60 HD port. <laughs> and some Joy-Cons. <laughs> Enjoy! <laughs> yeah. Enjoy Con. There you go. <laughs> oh, mercy. Zing. Oh, well. Uh, happy Nintendo for all. Uh, yeah, and then I just wanted to give a little story that is interesting because Xbox has been fairly quiet, uh, obviously, since they launched the Xbox Series uh, consoles. They've in, they, they talked about that they would have ongoing announcements, and so now we're hearing there potentially is a rumor where they will finally announce that they have officially completed the deal to buy Bethesda. Uh, was it Xenomax? What is the... Xenomax uh, Studios, I think. Uh, yeah, publisher. Uh, that they have officially bought it, and they're going to go into detail, potentially in March, an event that just Jeff Grubb has talked about, that they will be talking about what that deal means, uh, exclusivity, and kind of announcements that we should look forward to. So I think this is important because at this point, Bethesda, the only games we know that are coming out that are new are all going to PlayStation. Uh, <laughs> that was Ghostwire Tokyo, and we also have Deathloop, are Bethesda Studios games or Zenimax Studio games, but they're both going to PlayStation as timed exclusives. So, and 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 as exciting as it would to be get the old Bethesda back catalog, those are still old games. So is it time now for Bethesda finally to come out and say, you know what, here's something new, and it's only going to be on Xbox, um, and this is where you're only going to be able to play Xbox or Bethesda games in the future. So, uh, Angela, what do you think? I mean, are you a Bethesda fan? Yes, big time. <laughs> I'm, I'm really looking forward to this event if it's real. <laughs> um, it'll be interesting to see what they what they do and say, and maybe we can squash some of those rumors about exclusives. Mm-hmm. I really wonder if in the background there's some – you have to think there's some talks going on between Microsoft 
uh, ZeniMax, Bethesda, and uh, and PlayStation talking about these exclusives and saying like, you know what, maybe let's ease up on a couple of these. You know, take I, either take out some of the exclusivity window. Maybe it's not a year. Maybe it's moved to three months or six months or something like that, or or not exclusive at all. Uh, and and you have to think. Right now, Microsoft has a couple of really big cards. Uh, the first one that comes to my mind is Indiana Jones. And Microsoft could be holding that or, you know, any single one of these franchises. You know, they could be saying, OK, well, you know, you want the next Elder Scrolls game. You want Indiana Jones on PlayStation. Play nice with the, uh, you know, exclusives that you have right now or, you know, maybe we won't play nice in the future. And I could, you know, Microsoft's been really gamer friendly and playing nice they've been the good guy for a little while uh but you have to wonder with this really really big acquisition um they they can kind of come in swinging now and and they they have a decent amount of of power to say look we're gonna have these on game pass uh and they could be exclusive to game pass so play nice or the next couple years are gonna suck for you guys if you want these kind of games yeah, there was a rumor that apparently the deal that Xbox uh, struck with uh, Zenimax doomed Stadia because they essentially said that would cut off a large library of games in the future to their platform. So um, as much as we said this is, is good for gamers, uh, cutting off platforms is, is not always the best thing because maybe you don't like this, but that's that's perfectly fine. Um, I, I do find it interesting that the, the, the Indiana Jones is an interesting one because that's not a owned ip by xbox so that one's going to be a conundrum because we've got sony with spider-man with a deal we've got the marvel ultimate avengers or ultimate alliance 3 on switch Mm -hmm. so disney's not exactly consistent with their properties and how they would play and disney may say we don't and, and i would say it could be exclusive i don't know if game pass is a day one exception because that means Disney may want more from them if it goes to Game Pass, right? Because that mm-hmm. becomes a – you're limiting that audience on who can get the game versus if it goes to, goes to Game Pass or whatever. So I don't know. Yeah. Um, and that does suck. Question. I mean Microsoft does not have the money to spend uh, to, to compensate. Is that JK, where they yeah, – LOL. They're like a yeah. the trillion-dollar company. They have the money to, <laughs> to, to swing around. They can exactly. do that if they want to. And, uh, and they, I don't know if they're petty enough to. That's the thing. That's what I'm wondering is going on in the background right now. Like, are they petty enough or, or I don't know, savvy enough, however you want to look at it, to say, yeah, you know what? We're going to spend a billion dollars just to keep this away from your hands if you don't play our game. And Microsoft is one of the very few companies in the world that can do that if they want they're to. Bigger than, they're bigger than Disney. They're bigger than Sony. They're bigger than everybody combined, except except for maybe Amazon and Google at this point. So, yeah, they yeah, can do it. Yeah, and it's funny that people are like – Oh, the Microsoft Xbox, they're the little underground. I'm like, no, they're, they could buy everybody if they wanted to. <laughs> the, fact that, the fact that Xbox is not the biggest name in gaming is the fact is it just shows a lot of incompetence in the past and they haven't played their game. Now, yeah. if they're truly honest, they'll say, yeah, we're doing this because we want people to buy Game Pass. But they've been this doing this. We want people to, to, to feel they can play their games anywhere. No, you're saying you don't want people to play games on PlayStation and Nintendo, except for maybe what we say. So I, I, let's just put it this way. Let's be honest and let's not put this – kumbaya attitude because it's not true they want your money guys just like nintendo wants your money but anyways um yeah i think it's really important and you know what ultimately game pass is a great leverage and if they said guess what for the first year it's exclusive to xbox and and game pass and if you want a raggedy old game when it's a year old and nobody cares (laughs) about it anymore you can buy it for 60 bucks on playstation nintendo guess what that would be perfectly fine as a secondary revenue source there's nothing because you know what a year later people are focusing on different games so i think People have to get a mindset of like it just has to be here. It can be other places eventually. Just like Xbox brought State of Decay or a lot of Nintendo or Xbox platforms to Steam down the road. They weren't there at launch eventually. So mm-hmm. I don't, I'm, I'm I'm interested. So I've talked a lot, um, but Angela. So we give you time to ruminate. So <laughs> what is your what is your uh, wishes if they were to announce something in March? The only thing that I'm that I really want is Elder Scrolls Six, and I know that's years off. So that's that's my most anticipated game from them. <laughs> People need to stop buying Skyrim. 
If they stop by Skyrim, they'll eventually <laughs> make Elder Scrolls Six. It's so scary. Just crazy. Yeah. Who doesn't crazy. have multiple copies? <laughs> oh, I know. And it's so funny because it's like, how many fallouts have we gotten since we got Skyrim? Which is just funny that, that that's what they focused on. So we shall see. So, Mark, do you have one one like like excitement about Bethesda you want to hear? Uh, aside from those exclusives, not not really. I, I would say the same thing. Uh, Elder Scrolls. That was that was kind of going to be my answer. So thanks for taking ten minutes to steal that one from me, Angela. Uh, just joking, just joking. No, <laughs> <laughs> um, no. I mean, I, yeah, I, I'd be happy with hearing anything really with the future of Wolfenstein, uh, Elder Scrolls. Whatever it is, uh, Doom with a female Doom Slayer. I don't care. Just give me some some good stuff. But I'm I'm way more interested in the the back end deal part of this than I am in any single game they could possibly announce. Yeah, it'll be exciting. And you know what? Maybe we'll get some new IPs because you know I mean Doom. All these all these franchises they're so old. What's mm-hmm. new from stuff that'll get us excited? Except for Starfield. That's the probably the next one that's going to come out. And oh God, I hope it's soon because that'll be awesome. Oh well. Yep. Uh, that is it for the news, folks. It is time now to talk about the bonus round. This week's topic is gaming pet peeves. Wow, we haven't talked about any pet peeves so far, have we? No, we've definitely not been <laughs> leading up to this. <laughs> so, Angela, you know, pet peeves. Um, you know, this could be, uh, you know, hardware, gameplay, any of those things. So, what, what, you know, what gets your, what grinds your gears, as we'd say, from Peter Griffin? <laughs> so I have a few. Uh, my first one is when a game doesn't auto save. That drives me absolutely crazy. Um, people who talk through cutscenes the first time you're playing through on a, in a when you're in a party chat and they're talking through the story. Uh, I feel like my entire Destiny 2 story was like that. Um, my wireless headsets fake interference. I don't like that. <laughs> and lastly. All, uh, this is specifically to Destiny. Um, all the complaining about the game. <laughs> find a new game and then come back I'm to sorry. it. I'm <laughs> sorry. No, 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 you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. I, I have a thousand hours in Destiny too, so uh, like I get it. It's uh, it's an amazing game. But um, there's a lot of complaining about it online. Maybe just take a break and circle back to it later. Yeah, those are mine. Those are mine. Wow. I expected like the fury to come forth. Well, of course you talked about you know <laughs> games that crash and headset yeah. issues, so you kind of kind of we've we've kind of covered a lot actually here. So I'm sure Mark <laughs> has nothing to talk about. No, not at all. Uh, I did want to get to a couple um, couple that I saw coming in through through Twitter and, and Todd. I don't know if you saw some coming in uh, in uh, in other places. Um, Barry Dunn <laughs> said the Animal Crossing villagers watching every. Uh, every step, uh, watching your every step. I don't know if if he's just creeped out. I kind of like my villagers. I think he needs to get new villagers. The only <laughs> one I didn't like was the clown sheep thing that I kicked off my island really quickly because no one likes clowns uh, following them. That's the one. Yeah, he yeah. he left. Uh, good riddance. <laughs> um, my <laughs> my my darling wife, uh, like I said, loves Harry Potter, Lego Harry Potter, and. Uh, she she replied to Todd's tweet with the dreaded words no one ever wants to see. Unexpected error has occurred. She said oh. that a couple of times in Harry Potter and uh, like either wiped a save or she couldn't load up. She she had the game at one point. She's beaten it several times over, but she had it at one point of ninety nine point eight percent complete and couldn't go any further. She had to restart the save file because there was something every time she hit a certain part to collect a certain thing, unexpected error has occurred and her switch would crash. So uh, that has be just 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 become like this dreaded thing. So when she saw she was sitting next to me when when uh, the first thing I'm going to talk about is is losing my freaking save file. Uh, very similar kind of thing. Unexpected error, corrupt file. Those things just suck. It's with any technology. It doesn't matter if it's a game or a, we've all had that, you know, going through school and you're writing a paper and you just you're you're on a, you know, a, a really good streak writing the paper. And then something happens and you lose all the progress and you're up till 5 a.m. and you're just hating life. Um, doesn't matter what it is. Lost save files, corrupt files, whatever it is. It sucks. It sucks. Wow. Um, yep. Yep. <laughs> 
<laughs> Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's a technology thing, but for gaming specifically, save files or just weird corruption things, not being able to finish a game like, uh, like Call of Duty, um, another great example. And, and it, you know, those things just don't go away because the more complex games get, the more chance there is for some weird little bug to make its way through QA and, uh, and go there. Um, on a night, night, lighter note, I'm going to get to just a couple of quick things. Uh, for me, card mechanics. I see card mechanics in a game. It's like an automatic couple of point reduction or just completely lose interest. Can you just um, If the Steam World games couldn't get me into card mechanics, I don't think a game is going to. Uh, it just, I don't know. If I want to play cards, I'm going to pick up a deck. If I want to play a video game, just leave the cards somewhere else. I don't know. That's just me. Um Broken but forced stealth. When a mission in a game is like you have to stealth your way through this one and not get spotted, but like the AI is just so stupid that like you can't throw anything or distract them anyway, and they just keep walking into a wall right next to you, and like it's just broken. Uh, that drives me crazy and will literally cause me to never play a game again. Um, <laughs> <laughs> crappy online, like especially with Nintendo games, but I mean any game. Um, We've all had those games, whether it's it's uh, a Call of Duty crashing or high ping or whatever it is. Just just no fix fix online everywhere. But Nintendo is a pretty bad uh, example of that. They they've never gotten anything, <laughs> anything right ever. Uh, we talked about this before. I'll quickly touch on again. Non wireless headsets. Mm-hmm. I like my wireless ness. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yes. <That's> words. <laughs> Nailed it. Things. Hey, I'm an English major too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Mark is so smart. SMRT. Me is smart. Yes. Uh, all right. Games that don't have crossplay and or cross save in this Hallelujah. day and age, everything should. Uh, and that's uh, you know they, when they said Apex Legends not gonna have cross save, it was like seriously. Like I know they're giving Switch players a level boost, but it's like at this point, like why just. Why would you go Come to on. platform? Yeah. Why would yeah, you go to the platform? Right. Like, I mean, yeah, if, yeah. unless Switch is your only platform, but like, that just seems so dumb. Um, so, this one's very specific to over the weekend playing with my, uh, my nephew and a couple of his uh, friends. And I mean, I'm going to preface this by saying I was a pretty shitty nine year old kid, I'm sure. <laughs> and I wouldn't have wanted what? to play with myself. Uh, or, no, that sounded bad. Uh, I wouldn't have wanted to, <laughs> to game. Uh, with, uh, is this, is this uh, explicit? I don't know. No, I I'm going to just, I'm yourself. just going to leave. Uh, <laughs> it's so low. Like, I, I wouldn't have wanted to talk to me either, but anyway, so like playing with people, a lot that of basically kids that stick age played so low, Mark. Right. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Yep. yep. All right. So anyway, um, people that put their mics basically inside their mouth and they like yell or make repeatedly annoying sounds or like eat into a microphone. And it's like, just no, it's like, no, I want to hear this. Well, you podcast with Charlie. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Like, ah, oh, man. Anyway, take your mic out of your mouth and stop eating Doritos while you're playing a game or, uh, just mute yourself. Um, yeah. Todd, you, you definitely opened a can of worms with this one. I'm not going to lie. Like I was <laughs> struggling when you said gaming pet peeves. I was like, I think that could be fun. But like I was kind of struggling for a day or so to, to think of some. And then I like actually sat down to think about it. And it just like the hate kept flowing. I was kind of scared. I was going a little bit Anakin Skywalker. I mean, you're, Palpatine. I'm your yeah, Palpatine. you're just That's like you're encouraging flow. letting the hate flow. It's, it's yeah. kind of scary. So uh, so now that you've encouraged me to let my hate out, what about you? Oh, boy. So I've been gaming a long time, so we have come a long way, but we still have so far to go. Um, Bad checkpoints that make you repeat huge sections of a game before the boss fight and make you watch a cutscene. It was good the first time, not the 85th (laughs) time. That's a good one. Um, Here's another one. When you're having a boss fight and you die, you only have like five health potions or something like that you come back the boss is at full health but all of your health potions are gone why yep why how did he did he did he he just take your health potions from you does it happen (laughs) 
Oh, Grand Theft Auto. He saw your unconscious corpse lying there, and he was like, mm, I'm this sucker's going to be body. back. I'm going I'm to get them health, yeah. health potions, yeah. yeah. You know what? I get it. You do that, but then the boss needs to keep his level of health you took down. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, if I couldn't beat him with all those health potions, how am I going to beat him with no health potions? Yeah. I'm not that good. Yeah. Get good? No, I can't. Um, <laughs> unskippable cutscenes? Or cutscenes that you won't let you pause them, or cutscenes you can't rewatch because you accidentally skipped them, or people were talking over them, Angela. Yes. <laughs> Agreed yeah. with all of that. <laughs> why, isn't a cut, why isn't a cutscene just something you see in the media gallery, right? Yep. Yeah. So yep. there you go. How many yeah, times so- do you have your, you know, your growing up, your your mom finished making the meatloaf and she's yelling at you uh, to come upstairs and have the meatloaf, and you're like, I gotta. I can't hear the cutscene. I can't pause a cutscene. You're trying to watch it, and the like, meatloaf's getting cold. And uh, yeah, I hear you. Yeah, and it's like, yeah, hmm, yeah, inconvenient. Oh well. Uh, my son would say, "I'm playing an online game, and mom and dad call me." <laughs> that's yeah. that's their favorite. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Um, oh well. Um, let's see. Save anywhere. Where's save anywhere? This day and age, we have unlimited hard drives. Why is it bad checkpointing? Let us save anywhere, like in most RPGs. Skyrim, I think I sca- saved 85,000 times. Because I don't know what's going to happen when that cursed chest I open might be a good thing or a bad thing. So let yep. every other game do that, please. Um, no button remapping? Really? Come on. It's not brain surgery. It's just A can do what B does. That's all it is. I'm going to throw one in for Sean Capri on this one. Uh, even though it doesn't really bother me, I know this bothers a lot of people. Invert sticks. Absolutely. Whatever makes it uh, more accessible to gamers. Um, and I would say that in Destiny 2, and maybe somebody knows how to do this and I'm just dumb, where are my uh, closed captions? I can't figure it out. Hmm. I want to see what they're saying because typically – People are talking, and I can't hear what they're saying, so I want to see what the, is happening in the cutscene. I can't find it anywhere in, in my sunset. Yeah, it used to be here, and I'm like, I can't find it anywhere. So come on, guys. Closed captioning, that's an ex- accessibility people that might have issues with hearing, and they just want to play the game. So please make that happen. I wonder um, if it's system level. Is there a system, like a, a thing that's on X. system level maybe? Yeah. Series S? I don't know. I don't know. I'd have to look maybe. But it's weird. It's not in the uh, the gameplay settings because it typically is. My son had the same problem. He was playing uh, Persona 5 Strikers, and he didn't have a way to to balance the volume of the uh, audio and the um, uh, chat – or not chat, but basically the dialogue with the music and all the sound effects. It was really loud in one way. I'm like, that's just dumb. You should be able to rebalance the audio so it sounds good. Oh, well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, let's see. Inability to pick up as much as ammo as you want or items as you want. Like I can carry 85 guns, but I can only hold 16 like uh, pieces of ammo, which is just weird. I think that's a prime problem in Destiny, Call of Duty, things like that. It's like, yeah, it just doesn't make any sense. Oh, well. Uh, and then to Mark's <laughs> point, lack of cross save. So um, I think we've covered everything, but you know what? I know we haven't. So um, everybody has pet peeves and it could be as simple as why should I have to pay $260 to have my own island in Animal Crossing? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, like I said, you, you kind of open up the floodgates on this one and I did stop before uh, – before I think I, I went too far down, but yeah, there are, there are so many things. I think we could, we could probably have a segment of the week or, or pet peeve of the week or something like that. So I want to hear what, what other people, um, I thought this was such a fun topic. So I want to hear what other people hate about, <laughs> about games as bad as that sounds. But I think this is so much fun that I, I hope when, uh, when people hear this, uh, they, they hit us back on Twitter or wherever and, and say like, Oh man, I hate when we see this or, um, I'd, I'd love. To, I didn't. I didn't even get started on like mobile games. So I like that was just something I didn't want to go into. But uh, I, I'm sure I could again write a full list on like cr- crappy little microtransactions and stuff like that. So yeah, it's just amazing that as much as the pet peeves we have, we still love this hobby and we come back absolutely to it regardless yeah. of those things. So just be better gaming. And you know, uh, if and if you're a, a, a publisher or developer or thing and you have the ability to change this in your games, please do and spread the gospel. Oh well. Angela, it has been a pleasure. You've been a phenomenal guest. 
tell people how they can reach out and find you on the interwebs. On Twitter, I am at AKA Phasma. And also you can read my work on seasongaming.com. Thank you for having me, by the way. It's been really fun. This is oh, really fun. thank you. Yeah, we, we've loved this. We love recommendations. So, um, and, you know, if you ever want to come back and something you're excited about or, or, or if you just tell us a, your work that's out there, tag us on Twitter and we'll definitely share it. Oh, thank you. Appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. So, Mark, how can people yes. find us? Well, we've simplified things a little bit. So we are closing down, I suppose, all the offshot Twitter accounts uh, or, or not kind of de- decommissioning, I think. We're, we're trying to fold everything into just at Seeker Friends U. So that's going to cover the whole Seeker Friends network. We thought, you know, there's a four of us and we're trying to run – four different Twitter accounts alongside our own personal Twitter accounts. And it was just kind of like, you know, are we, are we seeing any traction or is it better to kind of combine them all? So we're, we're going to at least test, test drive this and see how people like it. Uh, everything just coming through one feed. So that is going to be at secret friends. You, that's where you're going to find uh, co-op mode. That's where you're going to find secret friends unite. That's where you're going to find code 47 and holocron chronicles all under one big network. Uh, so follow, at Seeker Friends U on Twitter. That's where you're going to get all the good stuff. Uh, you can also find me at the underscore Canardian and Todd at T Oxtra. Yeah. So if you want baby pictures, go to Mark's. If you want food pictures, look at mine and my rants against the bad cable provider I have. <laughs> <laughs> and now that Todd's opened up these floodgates of anger, I'm sure I'll have some angry rants and uh, have to post some cute baby pictures uh, to to compensate for that. Uh, but aside from Twitter, you can also subscribe and rate us, uh, follow us on YouTube and other podcasting services, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you have uh, your, your podcast preference. Uh, we also have shirts and other great merch over at TeePublic. All of that goes towards uh, local charities that, uh, that Charlie belongs to down in the States, which is awesome. Awesome. Um, I love, uh, you know, any any kind of little bump we can get to uh, to help some some people in need is uh, is great. So, uh, yeah, go check us out on any of those services. And, of course, follow us, uh, the Secret Friends Unite Facebook group as well. With that, Mark, Angel, it's been a pleasure. Listeners, we'll see you in two more weeks. And with that, it's always better to game together. In each of us, there burns the fury of a warrior. In every generation, a few are chosen to prove it. One of you three will decide the outcome of the tournament. Three strangers will travel to the mystical realm of Outworld to defend our people against Shang Tsung. You will die. And his forces of darkness. In an ancient tournament. One more victory. Your soul is mine. And our world 